All right, take care. See you in about a week. Thank you. Good luck with the uh, work. Thank you so much, Finn. See you soon, it's okay? She's going to Cebu City for work, and I'll probably go to Allegria or something with Jake. See you in a week. Did you guys miss the neon green nuclear colored blind your eyes jacket? Well, it only means one thing. It's Anna time. We're going to dive Allegria, or sorry, Allegria Dive Resort. Do a quick dive. I want to test out some uh, new gadget, really cool strobe light, which means it's gonna isolate like one small creature and uh, isolate it from the background. I'll get into the details later, but I'm excited. <laughs> actually loaded up quite some stuff onto the bike bringing all of my scuba gear except my suit which is uh takes up a lot of space i cramped up into this big backpack uh, the box in the back and then my bcd so let's drive uh one hour drive south <laughs> Ah, always feels so good to be back here. It's almost like a second home. Gorgeous, beautiful morning. Super low tide. You can even see some of the statues' heads popping out of the water. Man, that is low tide. You can even see the buoys of the new sanctuary. They're on land now. And of course, the locals harvesting the uh, shallow reef here. They collect a lot of shells. I've actually tried it before and it tastes really good, some of them. And you can just see the folks around this area doing their harvest in the morning or pretty much every day when there's a low tide. See some over there. Right there. Ah! something about the ocean breeze guys the ocean smell feels so good there's always been one thing that I really wanted to experience in my life is that is to see an area that's maybe not in the perfect condition but there might be some improvements and see how that area develops over time through conservation and that has finally happened here in Alacria Dev Resort because they worked so hard to get these marine sanctuary and, and it might not be a big one it's, a, it's probably one of the smallest I've seen, but it's something to start off with. And once you set up that, there's a potential of expanding, protecting more. Now, why do I want to see that? Because with your own eyes, you're able to document the state of the reef when you start. And now there's a sanctuary and it's been up there for about two months. And let me tell you, we are seeing some insane changes the amount of fish there's now it's incredible because the fish there the, they usually spawn every two weeks and it's thousands of eggs or seeds or whatever it is <laughs> and you can already tell in only two months the amount of fish and seal up there has grown you know dramatically creating this beautiful effect for the communities here because there is no I don't well there are some rules and regulations regarding fishing but they're never followed only with sanctuaries now there is a hundred meter fishing line away from the sanctuaries but that also that one is never followed the locals they uh, they at least they don't go into the marine sanctuaries but they hang around them which is basically fine but what that means is that's where the where they're able to catch uh, bigger fish grown because if if you have a uh, fisherman harvesting the same area constantly, the fish never gets a chance to grow. With that one, they both grow, and when they grow, they spawn. They usually don't spawn that much if they're just juvenile fish or baby fish. So they're able to grow, they spawn, and then they have to migrate out of the reef once they're too big, and that's where they catch them. So it creates this beautiful effect to these sanctuaries. Amazing that I've been able to be here before this sanctuary came, documented, and now seeing the effect in only two months, which is incredible. So let's see how it is after six months.
Well, that's enough to talk about that. Let's go out there, take a sneak peek up and close. You know what's fascinating also about this area here? It seems like it's nothing, but I've noticed like there's an octopus den over there and at high tide, this is, it looks just like mud, grass and nothing too much. And it's actually a really cool spot to catch or uh, see some beautiful critters. And even from the distance, looking at the reefs standing up, they're like brownish, colorless, but once they're under the water, the colors, man, the colors. So here we are, the start of the new sanctuary of Allegria Dev Resort. <laughs> like I said, it might not be much, but it does a ton. I want to show you guys something very special. This is locally made Filipino jet ski made out of the wood. Hello. <laughs> Look at this. Nice one. All made of wood. I mean, it's proper size. Look at that. Locally made Filipino jet ski. That's legit. And I've seen them a couple of times going back and forth here. They have about a 20, 20 horsepower engine. You see the exhaustions here in the back. That is awesome. Maybe we can take it a spin, I don't know. Oh, I guess this is the, uh, the steering wheel, engine, mirrors. I'm not sure what that is. Air intakes. Wow. Now that is a serious skill to be able to work this out with just wood. Yes, what? Additionally, the guy that built this one, he also built the boats of a dive allegory resort. This one and that one, the big one, I think. Very skillful. This is Atelino, he is the master boat builder. Skillful craftsman that can actually build a proper looking jet ski. <laughs> We're gonna try. I had to try that. 
or hitchhike a little bit it's pretty solid and as you can see at the background we just drove around uh, the new sanctuary here so awesome to see they're getting involved with the conservation and protecting it bringing more fish in life not just for scenery but also the local fishermen all right I want to show you guys a few upgrades that I've been investing in. So what we got here on the left and right, this is my ambient light. And this one is a strobe light, so this one gives us the flash and create these beautiful images. And I've only done two or three dives with it so far. This one, I can isolate this subject. Instead of the subject to blend in with the environment, this one is going to make it pop out. Very lovely Filipino breakfast. Mm. Yes. After all that diving, I'm dead. Yeah. yeah, so we also got Charlie over here. He's doing his open water course, becoming a diver. That's awesome. We also tying up Jake because it's low tide. I only let him loose when it's high tide. Because he just, he, he freaking takes off like a rocket. He's, he runs so fast now, guys. We're gonna buy him a GPS tracker and attach it to his collar. Because when the time comes and we're maybe going to an island or something, I want to let him loose, of course, to run around. But I'm not gonna do it without a GPS tracker. <laughs> Let's gear up, time to dive. At the resort, we had a couple of students all the way from Antique and Panay. They took a ferry from Iloilo all the way to Sepu for 15 hours just to go learn scuba diving. And the new changes we see around the reef is there's a lot more of small fishes and then big ones like these. I also did a night dive and under this beautiful coral I saw for the first time a new fish that i never seen before. It had these beautiful white dots on them and you can see on this back he has this blue, black and yellow circle which is a fake guy supposedly distracting other fishes. After diving for a couple of years now I know the behaviors of some fishes and this one usually swims upside down but I noticed he was swimming straight, which was uncommon. And at the back of him, you can actually see a wound from a spear gun. A survivor. It's also funny how the marine life works at nighttime because some of the fishes, they think they, they can't be seen. And I can see you, buddy. I can see you right there. And the fan's favorite, Nemo. When I noticed this scorpion fish at first, I thought it was something dead, but looking closer, it's just well camouflaged. And you know it's a scorpion fish because he has this sort of beard looking face, kind of grumpy, but I don't know exactly what kind of mood he's in, but kind of looks grumpy. There's one area in this reef that I always go back to because each dive there's something new and I've been following this specific fish right here. He's been growing very fast and it's getting quite big now for the last couple of weeks and he actually changes colors as he matures and transforms into a completely different fish. Now probably the coolest thing I saw of this dive was these eyes popping out of a, some sort of a den and looking at the footage this is a uh, orange mantis shrimp. I don't know the scientific name, but this one is quite rare. So hopefully we can see him in full shape once he gets out of his den, maybe sometime down the road. A very cool find. Also at nighttime, there's so much life and all the crabs and critters come out, like this giant hermit crab. Also, one of my favorite to film and photograph is the nudibranchs. Why? Well, they're the most colorful creatures, I believe. 
They also come in very different shapes and forms and there's thousands of them. These ones are about the size of a penny, tiny. <laughs>